Welcome. Welcome to the Wolf Dead. Shh. Welcome to the Wolf Dead Podcast. Shh. Hello, everyone. <laughs> this is the episode where we tell you all now that we got super into smoking cigarettes <laughs> at the Long Island Retro Game Expo this weekend. And you should. Addition to- and you should, too. This this it- episode sponsored by Marlboro. <laughs> Because in addition to retro video games, it was also about that nicotine hit. <laughs> yeah. Johnny! <laughs> Johnny! Bring me my bring me my slippers. <laughs> Hello. Actually, uh, welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. Yes. <laughs> uh I was whispering because uh we got in trouble this week at the Long Island Retro Game we Expo. Did, we did. Uh, I'm told that uh, people watch this to uh, uh, and they fall asleep to this podcast. Oh my god! Shut up! You're ruining! You're ruining it! <laughs> I was told people go sleep to this podcast, and when I start by yelling, they don't like that. <laughs> they don't like when I do that. It's just that your whispering sounds a lot like you've had like at least. 40 packs a day. So. I understand. I understand. Um, anyway, hey, Jake. Look, it's not, it's not our months. fault. We were raised in a Sicilian house, and that's just that's just a very loud environment. Yes. So blame our mother. Our default volume is like an eight. Yeah. Because we have to so. be able to yell at each other across rooms. <laughs> and, and over other people who are talking. Yes. And just saying nothing. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, guys, welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. We got things to talk about today, such as yep. um, apparently some secrets are have been revealed. Secrets. Secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Microsoft, apparently. Uh, no, they claim that Sony's been doing some nefarious behavior with this here console wars. Yes. Um, secrets. <laughs> Uh, and then there's some more uh, back and forth between Microsoft and Sony. Uh, mm-hmm. Also, there was a Splatoon 3 Direct. I have not watched it. I care very little. <laughs> but I kind of, I'm interested in a single player. If there's a single player, I will play yeah. a single player. Um, What else is going on? Uh, Some wacky uh, other PlayStation stuff has been revealed. Uh, yeah. Uh, some... Uh, Spider-Man is, of course, out on PC now, and through looking at the code, people have discovered things about the game and about something Sony might have down the road for its future PC ports. And Um, Spider-Man, for some reason. Yeah. And some other bullshit we got to talk about. Yeah. Um, But anyway, uh, I guess we could just jump right into it, can't we? Yeah, let's jump right in. Let's start off with what Bob got wrong on last week's Nintendo Fuck! podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what was last week's? Uh, oh, we talked about talk a whole of, lot yeah. of nothing. Yes. Um, and at 23 minutes in, you talked about Back to the Future 3, and you said that Doc's kid was named Seamus. That is incorrect. Doc's two children are named Jules and Vern after the author Jules Verne, who both Doc and his wife Clara bond over earlier in the movie. See, it's a callback to that part in the movie. So why is it? So I don't know where you got Seamus from. There's, there's a Seamus McFly in it because that's Marty McFly's ancestor. Okay, hold on. Uh, all <laughs> of all of the characters in Stray are Back to the Future named. Right. <laughs> so hold on. I gotta. I gotta find a list of 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 the characters of Stray. Okay. And it's so I, uh, yeah. It's, I saw the clip you were talking about where you talked to the Doc robot. Yeah. This that's Doc. That's Doc. But then there's one that's Seamus, and then Sheamus. there's o- there's other there's other characters. Okay. What are somebody, their names, somebody link. I can't find it. <laughs> somebody link me a friggin' list of the characters. God damn it. <laughs> well, J- anyway. JLG in the chat says Stray D's nuts. You're not helping. 
Uh, no, but that's a good one. All right, well, you, why don't you guys link me? I'm doing a podcast. Yes. And thank um, you for joining us on this week's uh, installment of What Did Bob Get Wrong on last week's Nintendo podcast. Tune in next week where I don't do it at the beginning of the episode. JL friggin' uh, linked me to a list of Back to the Future characters. That's not helpful at all. <laughs> it's the opposite of what I wanted. Anyway. Uh... No, 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 don't link me Stray's best characters. This doesn't have the names of any of the characters. Momo is one of them, actually. Is Momo a Back to the Future character? No, <laughs> Momo is not a Back to the Future character. Rats. <laughs> anyway, well, tell me about right. why what Microsoft uh, uh, is coming out here saying, spewing nonsense about Sony. Okay, so f for context, uh, as we all know, Microsoft is currently in the process of trying to acquire Activision Blizzard. Um, they can't just do that, though. They have to go through all sorts of regulatory bodies to get it approved by various different world governments. Uh, and right now, they're going through that process in Brazil. And um, because of this process, they have to submit a lot of documents. And in these documents, a lot of secrets are being uh, revealed. Uh, and one of them borders on conspiracy theory, but uh, we will get into it. Uh, Microsoft claims that Sony pays for blocking rights to keep games off of Game Pass. Uh, Microsoft claims that Sony pays for blocking rights to stop developers from adding their content to Xbox Game Pass. The explosive claims are part of documents filed with Brazil's National Competition Regulator and part of a review of Microsoft's act acquisition of Activision Blizzard. Microsoft's ability to continue expanding Game Pass has been hampered by Sony's desire to inhibit such growth, uh, claims Microsoft in an August 9th filing to the Administrative Council for Economic Defense, or CADE, uh, as translated from Portuguese. Sony pays for blocking rights to prevent developers from adding content to Game Pass and other comp competing subscription services. Does this mean that Sony is evil and Microsoft is casual? is casually out here revealing some dastardly business practices. The reality is likely a little more complicated on both sides. Sony could simply be paying for exclusive rights for its own streaming services, or it may have clauses in, uh, in some publishing contracts that prevent some games it publishes uh, from being published on rival subscription platforms. It's not clear exactly what Microsoft is referring to here, but contracts for publishing games can be complex, particularly when rights for streaming and subscription services are, are involved. Documents filed in Epic v. Apple last year uh, revealed Microsoft had been considering lowering the revenue split for PC games in exchange for a grant of streaming rights to Microsoft. If Microsoft had proceeded with the plans, that could have led to the company securing exclusive streaming rights for some games, preventing them from being, uh, preventing them from being available on rival streaming services. It all depends on how publishing contracts are written, and both Microsoft and Sony regularly secure gaming exclusives that involve time releases, console exclusivity, and lots of marketing dollars. Microsoft is attempting to convince Brazil's Cade regulator uh, that it, that it should wave uh, it should wave through the company's proposed acquisition of Activision Blizzard for six, sixty-eight point seven billion dollars, uh, while the Federal Trade Commission is analyzing documents Microsoft from Microsoft on its acquisition in the U.S., that correspondence is private. It is not the case in Brazil, where its competition regulator offers up public documents that provide unique insight into the business uh, competition between Microsoft and Sony. Uh, okay. So, uh, I, don't, I don't know what... I don't, I don't understand what the difference is between... What do you mean? Uh, Sony just getting exclusivity for a game and purposely saying like, like okay so it seems like Sony can get exclusivity for a game they could be like yo your game we love it you can only put it on PlayStation and they're like I right. bet give us money and Sony's like all right deal it sounds like in this case Sony is being like yo we like your game we want you to put it wherever you want to put it but if you put it on Game Pass, you, you put, we'll give you money to not put it on Game Pass. Yeah, uh, they're making it. I think they're the point of this whole document that Microsoft submitted 
was to basically make it sound like the Sony is trying to stifle competition between the two platforms. Like Sony is actively putting money into uh, hurting Xbox's business rather than just letting the two competitors compete naturally. I think I that's feel- what they're trying to get at. A lawyer uh, would, I think a lawyer would easily be able to argue that this isn't much different than just regular role exclusivity. Yeah. The, the uh, only difference is you're, you're naming a, a, a company and being like, you can't work with them, with them specifically. Yeah. Instead of saying you're exclusive to us, these people specifically, we don't want you to touch them. Yeah. Uh, it should be noted that this is also part of the, uh, remember a few weeks ago, we talked about how uh, Xbox is saying that they, you know, they don't think that Call of Duty is that big of a deal in the gaming world. That acquiring them is not going to be a huge loss to Sony, even though Sony's saying like they need Call of Duty on their platform. Yes, uh, that was all part of this. Uh, these filings with the Brazilian regulators. So this, it's all basically Microsoft doing everything they can to try and make it look like what they're doing isn't stifling competition. And trying to prove that Sony, in fact, is the one who's trying to stifle competition by preventing Microsoft from getting some high profile games onto Game Pass. So what is the argument that Microsoft is stifling competition? Oh, because of the Activision Blizzard thing. Yeah. Okay. 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 Anytime anytime a company tries to acquire another company, especially for like billions of dollars, they have to go through regulators in the various countries that, you know, require it. Uh in Brazil, apparently, it's all public. So everything that gets, you know, filed gets uh, released to the, the world. And right. because of this, we can translate it and see what they're saying and what their arguments are for trying to acquire Activision Blizzard. Because, yeah, buying Activision Blizzard, if you're a platform holder and you buy a public another publisher and developer, you kind of are, you know, taking that developer away from the third party field. So they really don't won't develop games for everyone. They'll just develop games for you. That does kind of stifle competition in a way. That's the point of exclusivity is to stifle competition. It is is right. to bring more value to your platform. What's unique about this is that it's specifically hey, you can't work with this specific person, which yeah. uh I'm not sure that's a problem. I mean, that might be a problem in Brazil. I'm not sure that's a problem here in America. I mean, no, I, I don't, here. I don't, I don't know how the legality of that works, but I know exclusivity is totally fine. It's just the only yeah. difference here is that you're specifically saying that we don't want you to do this one thing with this yeah. one company. Um, so the the only the only thing is that it's nefarious. It's 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 yeah, it's a bad look on Sony, which has had a big history of just not playing ball with other companies. This is just one of the only times we're seeing them. uh, uh, Not one of the only times, but usually when they're speaking to the public about not playing ball, they have some weird, wacky like way to talk around it. Yeah. Uh, But they've been found out in the past to internally uh, 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 be pretty nefarious with not wanting to play ball with other companies. Yeah, uh, the article goes on to state that whether Microsoft's claims about blocking rights are accurate, it wouldn't be the first time Sony has used financial incentives to block game developers. Sony held back PS4 cross-platform play for years and implemented cross-play revenue share for publishers that wanted to enable cross-play in their games. Sony's cross-platform revenue share forced publishers to pay Sony a royalty whenever PlayStation players contributed more than a certain percentage to the bottom line of a cross-platform game to offset the reduction in revenue. This is from uh, uh, Epic Games CEO Tim Sweeney testified last year that Sony was the only platform holder that required compensation for cross-play. Yeah, we covered that. Um, Yeah. That was a huge deal. So so back what was it? 2018 when Fortnite came to the Switch? Like that was when Fortnite yeah. came to the Switch was the big uh stepping stone for cross-platform play. And ever yeah. since then, everybody just pretends like cross-platform play is totally normal. Is like the way things have always been. Every th- of course. Yeah. Uh, of course I can expect this game to be cross-platform, right? 
But before that, before Epic stepped in and like said fuck you to Sony, basically, uh, it was it was it was not expected at all for 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 us to be able to play with PlayStation people on our Xboxes or or on yeah. PC or, or whatever. It was like incredible to see something like that happen. Um, so that was just one case of Sony not play. Sony was really the reason why there was no cross-platform play for a long time. Microsoft was able yeah. to 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 hang. Nintendo was able to hang. And then once they released all that stuff, Sony kind of got found out that they weren't down to hang. Yeah. Uh, and when Nintendo is down to hang, when Nintendo is being progressive in its online yeah. uh, mentality, you know you're <laughs> you're in trouble. Part of why Sony isn't down to hang so much is because uh, they're kind of on top of things. They're kind. They're kind of. Yeah. Uh, they're doing. I mean, I don't want to say that they're doing better than Microsoft because Microsoft, as a company, is doing very well. <laughs> right. But, well, in terms of gaming, yeah. Uh, the well, and uh, this segues nicely into our next article. The PS4 did outsell the Xbox One by a lot. And yes. I think things are a bit more even now, but the PS5 does seem to be outpacing the Xbox uh, Series X and S. Yeah, in, in terms uh, with, of console sales, yeah. uh, PlayStation has that down, and that's why I think they're they're pretty they're comfortable with kind of you know not playing along with the other guys because they have no reason to because they're already doing so well. Yes. Anyway, uh, but with that said. Uh, Microsoft finally admits that the Xbox One sales were less than half of the PlayStation 4. This is, again, part of um, reporting from The Verge and part of that same uh, regulatory filing. I didn't know that they weren't open about this. How could you pretend like this wasn't a thing? (laughs) Uh, All right. So Microsoft stopped reporting its Xbox One sales figures at the beginning of its 2016 financial year, focusing instead on Xbox Live numbers. The change meant that we've never officially known how well Xbox One was holding up compared to PS4 uh, after Xbox One's troubled launch. Analysts estimate uh, estimates have consistently put Microsoft in third place behind Sony and Nintendo. And now a document submitted to Brazil's national competition regula- uh, regulator uh, finally shed light on how the Xbox One generation went. Quote, Sony has surpassed Microsoft in terms of console sales and install base, having sold more than twice as many Xboxes in the last generation, submits Microsoft as translated from Portuguese. Sony no longer reports PS4 shipments, which means its lifetime sales sit at 117.2 million as of March. While Microsoft hasn't provided a concrete sales number for Xbox One, its admission means that the company must have sold less than approximately 58.5 million units. That lines up with the market research from uh, Ampere and Analyst in 2020, which puts the install base of the Xbox One at 51 million units at the end of Q2 2020. Nintendo Switch currently sits at 111.08 million lifetime sales and looks to pass the PS4 later this year. Damn. Microsoft seems to be closing this giant gap with its Xbox Series X and S consoles, though. Uh, Ampere analysts say Sony ended 2021 with PS5 cumulative sell-through reaching 17 million units, around 1.6 times the performance of the Xbox Series sales. While Microsoft recorded a quarterly hardware revenue decline for Xbox recently, CEO Satya Nadella said Microsoft has been the market leader in North America for three quarters in a row amongst next-gen consoles. Microsoft still doesn't reveal official Xbox sales numbers. Okay, so it seems like this Brazil hearing just gave us a ton of information about uh, Microsoft's business dealings. Yes, and I'm sure there's going to be more to come. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh... It's, I mean, why, it's weird that they wouldn't admit that they wouldn't just say, I mean, well, I mean, what are they, I guess they just didn't give us the number, the hard numbers, but like we knew them already. Well, no, we did. Microsoft never officially said, uh, after 2016, they stopped saying how many Xbox ones were being sold. But we know from the NPD group, right? No, we don't. 
Really? They, we know we know games sold, but they never they never reported on systems. The closest we ever got was during an EA conference call. Somebody said the Xbox the PS4 generally outsells Xbox One two to one, uh, which is you know yeah. So that that's about as close as we ever got to like hard numbers for the Xbox One. And now here, Microsoft basically said the same thing: two to one, more than half is essentially the same thing. Um, but when they say that the Xbox One sold less than half of the PS4, uh, you know that kind of stands the reason why they wouldn't release their numbers because that's not we, when your competition is selling over a hundred million and you're not, not. That's a bad look. Yeah, you have no reason to say yeah anything. I mean, but the play the Xbox One was a, a colossal failure, especially at first. Yeah, uh, they they mm-hmm. had a horrible uh, uh, announcement. Um, I mean, the Xbox 360 did really well here in North America, and it yes. was it, to fumble the ball that bad to make your whole user base switch to a different platform in the next generation. Yeah. It must have been a colossal failure, and and yeah, their announcement uh, went really poorly, and everybody decided to switch to PlayStation for the PlayStation 4 generation. Yeah, uh, it's something that still haunts them to this day. Yeah, pe- people. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, pe- people uh, hold the PS5 in such high regard over an Xbox Series console. When mm-hmm. I think the Xbox Series is a better console. But yeah, I mean, another part. Another part of that problem is the exclusivity. PlayStation's got the better exclusivity when you look at it at the surface level, but uh, but also. PlayStation's kind of catching up with their service model. I think PlayStation yeah. uh, Plus Premium is a great service. It's, it, it rivals Game Pass definitely. Um. Anyway, is that so, it? Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So that was basically Microsoft saying that look, Sony is handing us our lunch in terms of console sales. If anything, we need to buy Activision because we need to be competitive with these people <laughs> over here. Oh, I understand. So they're yeah. they're using they're using all of this. They're like we're the little guy here in this problem. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, yeah. they're we're the, the little... biggest computer company in the world. Yeah. They we're the little guy help. who can afford a 70 billion dollar acquisition. <laughs> But so I think Sony's going to turn around and buy some big studios. I think they're in talks to buy, uh, or it's rumored that they're going to be buying Square. That's the big rumor, and I think uh, we reported this not too long ago too. I think the Square wants Sony to buy them. <laughs> if anything, Sony may not want to buy Square, but Square wants Sony to buy them. Right. So right. We'll see and if n- that actually happens. And Nintendo's on the sidelines, just just playing with their coloring book. They could care less. Basically, yeah, they're doing just fine. Uh, to put this in perspective, uh, when the when the original Xbox uh, came out, that generation that sold 24 million units compared to the PlayStation 2's 155. Oh my god! <laughs> so historically, Microsoft has had trouble with uh, catching up with Sony in terms of console sales. Right. So right. we'll see if this generation turns it around, and we'll see if uh, their admission helps them buy Activision. <laughs> we don't know. Uh, we have to take a a little bit of a break right now and talk about yes. uh, uh something very Our balls. Oh, God, yeah! <laughs> tell us, tell us about your balls, Will. The, the, I will because this episode is brought to you by Manscaped. Oh yeah, uh, Manscaped, the best in the world when it comes to below the waist grooming. Their products are precision engineered uh, tools for your family jewels. I'm reading the thing they told me to read. Manscaped's performance package is the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Over six million men have trusted Manscaped for their grooming habits. And uh, you can be one of them. Uh, 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code WOLFDEN at manscaped.com. Now, I don't know about you, Bob, or anybody in the chat, but I, when I first became a wee lad and had hair down there at the tender age of 11, I think, because I, I, you know, I, I hit 
earlier than most dudes because I'm that masculine. Because we got a lot uh, of hair. We got a lot of testosterone in our family. We're I've Italian. Tr I tried scissors because a buzzer scared me. Let me tell you something. Blood gets everywhere. Yeah, I mean, we uh, talked about this. How come every man... We can't have... We can't talk about nipping our balls in every manscape, man. But I have but, had that happen, and it sucks. But I think it's important to, to say that because... Like when I first tried a manscaped razor, I was I almost cried because like it didn't hurt. It, like I, I didn't. Look, get it's cut. on. It's on. It's, it, it was a beautiful thing. It just it worked. the The trimmer is uh, the trimmer is waterproof. It uh it the way the blade is designed helps reduce nicks. It reduces the risk of ingrown hair and it reduces grooming accidents. Like I said getting blood everywhere it has a nice little light so you can see what you're look doing. at the light uh, look at the light in my anamorphic lens look at it. it's doing the anamorphic <laughs> flare wow you can use it in the shower um and manscaped isn't just you know the razor Get my package. oh you do you want to that's a ball joke do you want to shave got, your uh do you want to do your live nose on right camera now? no i'll do it <laughs> uh so yeah the model that bob is showing off is the lawnmower 4.0 uh, they also have uh, the crop preserver ball deodorant. This will get your uh, this will get your balls feeling mighty nice. And included the crop reviver ball toner. This will change the way uh, you approach your hygiene routine. It'll turn uh, your balls from from a, from an E minor to an F sharp, right? Yes, yes. And the not your balls, but uh, your ear and nose trimmer, the weed whacker. Um, just as good as their, uh, just as good as their lawnmower razor, but you stick it up here and in here. And let me tell you, again, I have a hard time with nose trimmers, but this one, fantastic. I'm starting to get hair in my ears. Yeah. So you know, oh I'm my god, old. dude, it's the worst. It is the absolute worst. That's how I've you been know. Pulling you're... them out with my hands. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you can go to, uh, I guess Manscaped.com and use code Wolfden. Get 20% off and free shipping. Yes, get 20% off and free shipping with the code WOLFDEN at manscaped.com. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Your balls. Well, thank you. All right. Good. My royalty-free uh, elevator music almost ran out. <laughs> uh, anyway, thank you, Manscaped. Also, thank you to our other sponsors, such as uh, Luke Antone with 33 months. Kyo Judo KJ, thank you for the seven months. It's our, it's our anniversary, Bob. What'd you get me? I got you nothing. I got you a Manscaped, Dad. Uh, Beefeet Turbo, thanks for the 19 months. LJW, thanks for gifting a sub. Kyo Judo, thank you 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 for gifting a sub. I thought I thought you broke, but no, Kyo Judo just gifted some subs. He gifted a lot of subs. Bob, have you ever been called Jesus by random kids? Not not just random kids, my own family. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, sometimes uh, we have to do ah when he rises from the basement. Yes, when I or or my our dad's favorite zinger when I wake up, he has risen. That's like an every morning thing. Yeah. Never gets old. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, there's a, we're getting a new game, the Nintendo Switch Online. Yes. Wave Race. Maximum yeah. power. Take to the waves in Wave Race 64 coming to the Nintendo Switch for Switch Online and expansion pack members on August 19th. That's my anniversary. <laughs> this game was sick. You should play it with your wife. Yes, this is a fun fun way to spend uh, five years of marriage. Hey, honey, let's not go out to dinner. Let's huddle around my Nintendo Switch and play Wave Race 64. This game <laughs> is sick, and it looks sick. Yeah, it still, it still does. The water effects for an N64 game are still very impressive today. Yeah, it, it, it's, it looks like it's emulating very well. Uh, yeah, I'm so very impressed with the way this game looks. It's a shitty emulation. Also, look at this incredible render of the Wave Race logo. Like, I'm up, I'm all about this. Yeah. Now, Wave Race, I believe, was four-player. Uh, yes. 
Was so it? I don't remember. That means you can play this bitch four player. It'll be yeah. split screen and it'll be like what? 144p each each <laughs> yeah. each friggin' screen? No, less than that probably. No, it was only two player. It was only two player? All right, that makes a little more sense. Yeah. That's unfortunate because I want to play this like if when somebody suggests to play Mario Kart, I want to be like, nah, dude, let's play Wave Race. <laughs> I also um, don't remember being able to ride a dolphin in the game. That seems I, that was an unlock. You had to uh. unlock that. I'm trying to think. I'm pretty sure. So the original release of Wave Race had uh, officially licensed Kawasaki jet skis in it. I okay. think uh, for this version, though. They don't have the license anymore, so they had to take it all out. <laughs> oh, that's dumb. Yeah. Ka- that's Kawasaki should uh, oh, no, 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 wait, want no, wait. to be down see, with that. Wait, I see Kawasaki banners in the trailer. Oh, okay. So maybe they did maybe they did relicense it. I know that they've one one of the releases they had to take out the Kawasaki uh the Kawasaki banners. They sh- yeah, I see the banner here. They yeah. should want to be in the game. This is free yes, advertising absolutely. for them. Like, yeah. why would they? Why would they need a license from Nintendo? Yeah. Um. Anyway. Uh. So that. Oh, ends that out. Nineteenth. Uh. Yeah. A couple 19th. days. Uh. Eighteen bit Gambit. Thank you for the fifteen months. Do I need to play Metroid Fusion to understand the lore behind the Manscaped products? No. You need to no. uh, <laughs> play uh, WarioWare. Uh, smooth moves. <laughs> You play yes. that. Yes. Uh, Migs Luna, thank you for the 22 months. Uh, okay. And now we will talk about the Splatoon 3 Direct. I know nothing about this. Tell me everything. Uh, I didn't watch the Splatoon 3 Direct, but I did read this article beforehand. Uh, on Wednesday, in a new Nintendo Direct presentation, Nintendo offered a deep dive into the world of Splatoon 3. Uh, detailing what's coming at launch and what's expected over the next two years of post-release content. Here is a rundown of confirmed Splatoon 3 information. New weapons. All previous weapon types from the previous Splatoon games will return for Splatoon 3, but there are at least two new additions. A bow-like tri-stinger that fires a spread shot of paint and can be charged up for a powerful shot. And a Splatana wiper. (laughs) Splatana wiper. Got it. Uh, a windshield wiper like sword that sends out a wave of ink. It too can be charged up for a powerful splash. There are also new special weapons which uh, can be earned mid battle. These include the Tacticooler, a refrigerator full of stat boosting beverages, the Wave Breaker, a sonic emitter that deals damage in a circular wave, and the Reef Slider, a shark shaped float that blows up and splatters ink everywhere. Is uh, that not Tentimus- a dolphin? Uh, I don't know if it's dolphin. Oh, no, that is a dolphin. dolphin. Yeah. Uh, Tenta missiles, ink jet, uh, ink storm, ultra stamp, and booyah bomb from previous games also return. Uh, new stages. It wouldn't be a competitive multiplayer without new places to fight. And Splatoon 3 will add a host of new locations to the series. Uh, Scorched Gorge, uh, E-Tail Alley, uh, Mincemeat Metalworks, and Undertow Spillway. It will also bring back stages from previous games, including Museum D'Alfonsino, Hammerhead Bridge, and Mahi Mahi Resort. Nintendo promises 12 stages at launch, with more coming in free post-launch updates. Uh, customization. The fashionable inklings and octolings of the Splatlands will have plenty of fresh styles to wear in Splatoon 3. Retailers from Now Couture, run by laid-back Nautilus Gnarly Eddie, a laid-back Nautilus uh, sells hats, masks, and glasses. Mano Wardaber, uh, run by <laughs> Jella Feller, uh, sells tops, t-shirts, and jackets. And Mr. Coco's Crush Station will let you into some new shoes, sandals, or slides. All of that gear will come with perks, but a guy named Merch uh, will let you swap in and out perks for gear items. I, I like this uh, this giant buff lobster, man. <laughs> players can also customize their win emotes with uh they can also customize their win emotes their splash tags which is their nameplate with a background um and and an 
in-game locker that will be visible to other players online. Uh, retailer Hotlantis will sell customization items and fresh catalogs of stuff will be added uh, every month of the game. So Splatoon 3, Splatoon, if anything, is known for like its fashion. So that's cool that they're giving you all these like brand new fashion to put onto your character and that new items will be added every month in addition be, to like, the guns. And that. I'll be honest, that was kind of a big deal for me. Like in the yeah. original Splatoon, I liked unlocking that stuff, but it, the problem was... I played Splatoon 2 mostly on stream and with viewers and stuff. Yeah. And when you play with viewers, you don't fucking unlock anything because you're you're playing <laughs> you're, when you're playing private lobbies, you don't unlock mm -hmm. anything, which kind of makes sense, but it was really annoying. And and, and yeah. the way that you like squad up kind of sucked, so like uh it was a pain in the ass to unlock stuff. Uh Yeah. But every time I could unlock something, I was really excited because I wanted my guy to be customized. I wanted a cool looking guy. And the fashion was pretty cool. There's some cool things that I wanted. Um, yeah. Supposedly, this game fixes a lot of the uh, squatting up stuff, which shouldn't be a feature. It should just be <laughs> part of the game. It should just be, you know, the norm now is that squatting yeah. with your friends should be easy. But uh, that's what the lobby features are all about. Yes, and uh, we'll get new. We're getting a new lobby features such as the ability to try out your weapons in the test range, or jump into a battle with or against friends by checking in on their hologram. Players can also watch replays of battles with the memory players, and lobbies are also where players can customize their personal lockers or browse the lockers of friends. Uh, oh, I thought that was a squad up, but that's just that's just literally the uh, the hub world. That's what yeah, I think that's what that is. Uh. Table Turf Battle, a collectible card game. Uh, a card-based battle game can be played in Splatoon 3's lobby. There are 150 cards to collect, and players will build out a deck uh, to battle others. Every player will be gifted an in-game starter deck. Uh, free and large-scale paid DLC. Nintendo promises at least two years of post-launch support for Splatoon 3. With new gear, maps, weapons, and other additions, Nintendo also plans to add the X Battle and League Battle modes in future updates. X Battle is unlocked after attaining an extremely high rank in Splatoon 3's Anarchy Battle, a competitive objective-based ranked mode, and League Battle will let players compete every two hours in teams based on their Anarchy Battle results. Uh, Kjax says... Uh... You can play test. You can play the testing range as you're waiting for a match. That's very good. That's cool. That's cool. And it's also, I think it's cool that they're offering free and paid DLC to this game. Keep, you know, this way they can keep as many people engaged as possible. And if you want a little extra, pay a little extra. They, they did a good job supporting the first, or, yeah. or, or split. Actually, both Splatoons. They did a really good job supporting them for, yeah. for a decent amount. I mean, uh, as, as much as Nintendo does. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Uh, Splatfest is back, hosted by a deep cut trio of Fry, Shiver, and Big Man. Uh, the Splatfest multiplayer event will return, but with a three-team, three-theme twist. The first Splatoon 3 Splatfest will pit Team Rock, Team Paper, and Team Scissors against each other on August 27th. The Salmon Run also returns bigger than before, uh, with Splatoon 3's take on hard mode. The Salmon Run lets four players team up to collect power eggs from enemies called Salmonoids. Salmon Run will be available at any time in Splatoon 3, and players will now face boss Salmonoids, including the new Slammin' Lid and the Big Shot. Even bigger is uh, Konozuna, a new King Salmonoid, a Supergiant Salmonoid. Uh, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of aquatic puns. Yes. They seem uh, to be big on that. Also of note, not in this article, Shiver, I I saw a different article that said Shiver is Nintendo's first openly, uh, what do you call it? Gender not, fluid? Gender, gender, a gender. Like, there's no gender. Like, yeah. what do you fucking yes. call that shit? I'm blanking on the on the term. <laughs> uh, it's, it's not genderless. Yeah, it's fucking... Like fluid, but not. Yeah. Non-binary. Non-binary. Thank God. you. God. I feel so stupid. Um, <laughs> non the first Nintendo's first non-binary character because yes. um, they purposely don't uh, 
they purposely avoided all like uh, 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 pronouns or um, words that would be uh would need a pronoun in other languages like you know like in spanish they need to be an a or an o at the end or whatever yeah. um uh, and they purposely avoided any of that stuff for this specific character and didn't for the other characters in this little trio so, and that's in all languages that's a very strange coincidence um, yeah and I don't think Nintendo will ever like officially confirm it or not. I just think they'll yeah. probably just have some flowery language around it to uh to to, yeah. to make it a non-binary character. Yeah. Uh also announced, not in the direct, but if you have a Splatoon 2 save file, you can transfer it to Splatoon 3 and you will get rewards for doing so including Three gold Sheldon licenses that you can exchange for main weapons regardless of player level. Uh, you can join Anarchy Battles from the beginning of the game regardless of player level. You can start the game with a higher rank depending on what your rank was in Splatoon 2. And you can get mashed against players with similar skill levels from Splatoon 2. Five out of five squid research lab scientists recommend transferring your data from Splatoon 2 if you have it. So see, if you see, transfer now- your... You that, transfer your save data from Splatoon 2 to 3, you have an advantage over everyone else. And that might be a little bit of a problem because uh, <laughs> Splatoon 2 did not support cloud saves. And oh. a lot of people had issues with specifically Splatoon 2 transferring yeah. it to other uh, consoles. I think AJ was unable to transfer his Splatoon 2 save over to another console. I got to check mine now. I got to see if my Splatoon 2 is even there. Splatoon 2 is one of the games that I jump into to check motion controls on controllers. So it should be there. Uh, Online Splatoon 3 data. This is on the Splatoon's official blog. Online Splatoon 3 data, like player level, ranks, items, and gear, is automatically stored in a server and connected to each player's Nintendo account. Thank fucking God. Since things like progress and story mode don't require internet connection, they can be stored via save data cloud backup service included in your Nintendo Switch Online subscription. You can also play on multiple Nintendo Switch systems if your user is tied to a Nintendo Switch account. But that doesn't say how uh, to transfer data from Splatoon 2 into Splatoon 3. Well, you just need it on your console, I'm sure. But again, that could be a problem. If you have yeah, in order to transfer data, save data from Splatoon 2 must be on the same system as the user account. Okay. That's huge, though. They finally, this is what I mean. Like, Nintendo is just so late to the game, but I'm glad that yeah. they figured it out. Like, like th- there's no reason why uh, save files need to live on your, need to be taught, need to be locked on your system and can't go to the cloud you know the the reason they did Mm -hmm. that was because they developed splatoon 2 in a weird way before cloud saves were a thing and uh they would have been easily manipulatable if you could cloud save them um but that's their fault for developing it that way uh yeah and now surprise they figured out a way to to not have it work like that um so i'm very happy that they did that so now Mm -hmm. You could just log in and play Splatoon 3 on whatever console you want, and all your saves will be there. Also, like, yeah. that makes it a little easier for, like, because they want to, like, make that game like an esports game. So, like, yeah. before you probably had to bring a Switch that's, like, your Switch, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, like, imagine you're, like, a professional Splatoon player and you need to get a new Switch and you have a save file conflict. Like, oh, yeah. That would be hell. You know, yeah. the other day I I played uh I'm still playing Guardians of the Galaxy, but I I transferred my save from the PS4 I have in the basement to the one I have upstairs. Okay, it's so easy. You just hit, <laughs> you know, just make sure the dates are lined up. You just download. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Played, you know, picked up where I left off. It's so wonderful. It's so mm-hmm. great. I don't understand why Nintendo doesn't just do that. Yeah, even uh even when you do have a like a save file on the cloud. It still has weird conflicts and stuff. It's still it's never easy. It's never easy going yeah. between two different uh, uh, Nintendo Switches. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's Splatoon three. I'm excited. We didn't see anything about really not much about single player. 
a lot of multiplayer stuff, no. which I, I'd imagine is what most people are excited about anyway. Yeah, I mean, Splatoon 3 is primarily a multiplayer franchise, so right. it makes sense. All right. Uh, up next, we have uh, the PlayStation PC launcher. Uh, yes, Sony could soon introduce its own launcher for its PC games following in the footsteps of Ubisoft, Rockstar, and Activision Blizzard. Oh, so References you'll have just to... another icon on your desktop, everybody. Yep. References to a PlayStation PC launcher have been found within the files of Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered, which launched on PC last week, suggesting that such a platform could be in Sony's future plans. VGC has verified the files and seen the references to the PlayStation PC launcher. This follows the discovery that Sony could be planning to introduce a PlayStation Network integration into its PC games. Uh, while neither Marvel Spider-Man nor any of the other PlayStation Studios PC games currently allow connectivity uh, with PSN accounts, Spider-Man's files contain multiple references to PSN account linked and PSN linking entitlements. Thus far, all of Sony's PC games have been released on Steam and the Epic Game Store. While PlayStation has a PC brand, uh, it is generally used as a collective term for all of its PC re-releases rather than a launcher. It's possible that these references could be suggesting a bespoke version of the PlayStation Store could come to the PC. This, coupled with the references to account integration, could eventually lead to cross-purchasing cross for titles on PS5 and PC. It's unlikely the first party would be, would keep its games exclusive to this launcher. While Microsoft offers its games on its own store, it also releases games on Steam. However, some publishers, such as Rockstar, require a reduced version of a launcher client to be active, when uh, even when launching a game from Steam as a means of verification. Last year, Sony Interactive Entertainment CEO Jim Ryan stated that PlayStation was planning to bring a whole slate of games to the PC. That's uh well I think that's good that they that they want to bring games to PC. Mm -hmm. Um it makes sense for them to have a launcher. It's just uh kind of sucks for us. <laughs> yeah, no, it it really does. I mean, the whole point of like the whole reason why people like Steam is all your games are right there. Like you don't have to, you know, you know, oh I want to play this game, I got to go to this place. You want to play this game, I got to go to this place. No, you just open up one app and they're all there. I want so, to be careful saying I like Steam because it is just a, you know, a, a platform and, and like, a, like a marketplace. Yeah. But yeah, I like having all, everything in one spot and Steam yeah. being the biggest one, it, it makes the most sense. Uh, Dreamcast guys in the chat. Hello. Uh, hey. Thank you for subscribing. And uh, he says, Spider-Man makes me squirt. You know, I'm not going to lie. That game did the same for me. Uh <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I mean, but, like, it also, I guess it makes sense for, like, the PlayStation to have, like, some sort of, like, more pronounced store presence mm -hmm. on PC, not just go through Steam and Epic, like, have something that links to your PlayStation account. Right. So, if you buy the game on PC, you, you also get it. You, have, you buy the game on PlayStation 4 or 5, you also get it on PC. But your then am I going to... can transfer back and forth. Your save files can transfer back and forth. But then am I going to be able to... Okay, now now that would be a huge deal. Being yeah. able to have my save file from my PlayStation go to my PC would be fucking huge. I mean, if you think about it, they were the original cross... Cross save is a term that they invented to talk about going from PlayStation 3 to PlayStation Vita and then to PlayStation 4. Yeah, that was a huge so, deal to me. Yeah, yeah. It was so it would make sense. For, yeah. The whole reason I bought a Vita was because of Titan Souls. Because I yeah. saw that I could play it on my PS4 or yeah, PS4 and on my Vita at the same time and cross mm -hmm. save and cross play and whatever. Cross buy. I could buy it on one and it'd be on both. And I could throw my save back and forth. That was like the original switch to me. But uh Yeah. Uh if I could fucking play if I can get my Death Stranding save off of my ps4 and play it on my steam deck i'd or or yeah. any windows handheld that i have i would fucking play yeah. i would f play death stranding again i would play it again if i can move my save yeah. file i don't want to have to go through the first like 10 hours again um but playstation having a launcher would be a problem with the steam deck 
which is why I'm yes. like a little, a little worried about that. I don't want, I don't want them to have a launcher that's going to have a conflict on the Steam Deck. Yeah, uh, but but there's other Windows handhelds that could you know get around that. But yeah, I, the Steam Deck's just way easier. Uh, Gornberger in the chat says, hopefully the launcher isn't an entirely separate program and it just launches after you launch a PSN game on Steam, like Origin does for some games. Yeah, because a lot That's of a times when you, when you launch a game, when you launch a game that has its own launcher, like it, it brings things to a screeching halt. Because that game, because then the launcher has to open, and then yeah, that has to load the game, and you have like now four programs running on top of each other, just to play your game. Yeah, um, Jedi Fallen Order, you can play that on Steam Deck, but it does first open the Origin launcher. Um, yeah. So that I mean, I'd be fine with that as long as I could play the game. I mean, it kind of sucks having to go through the origin launcher because, like I, like you just explained, it's another yeah. hurdle to jump through. And it did stop me from playing the game the other day. I opened up, uh, uh, I opened up Jedi Fallen Order, and then it had to yeah. update through Origin. And then while that happened, I just got sidetracked and then never played it. Um, yeah. So that could happen, but. Again, if I could fart my save file for Death Stranding over to a handheld, I would be playing that now. So I think that's a huge deal, and that would be great. Same thing with maybe uh, Spider Man. If I could play that, yeah, on a Steam Deck, that would be a uh, my save file. If I could play my save file, that'd be a huge deal. Anyway, uh, um. next news: details of Black Ops Four cut single player oh yeah this was the yes this, this was uh so call of duty the sales were going down yes at, at this time at this point in time and they spent a lot of money on the single player campaign and the single player campaign was getting worse and worse as they went on with all of these mm-hmm. games and less and less yes. people were playing it because people just really cared about uh the multiplayer so Call of Duty Black Ops 4, they said, fuck it. Just no single player at all. Uh, yes, and now we have uh, an enormous cache of cut content from Call of Duty Black Ops 4 has been posted online and detailing developer Treyarch's early plans for a single player mode. Uh, gameplay details, screenshots, and design documents are all included in the post on the infamous Game Leaks and Rumors Reddit uh, by user Purple Toaster 20 who states that this is the culmination of months of research research and discussion research. Uh, with, with those who knew about the mode before it was ditched. The post also comes ahead of a 30-minute video on the mode, which the user says they intend to post online next week. Black Ops 4 launched in 20, 2018 without a story-based offering, despite official comments suggesting a traditional campaign was never planned. Uh, reports at the time revealed that a sizable co-op career mode had been in the works upon uh, upon before ultimately being scrapped. Technical concerns and time pressures, not helped by the game's release of moving forward to avoid Red Dead Redemption 2, meant the mode was ditched and the hastily put together Battle Royale blackout mode uh, was offered instead. Today's post goes into detail on the cut mode, officially dubbed Career, which was designed which uh, designed as a mission-based 2v2 race to the finish offer offering that could also be played solo with AI players standing in. Set in 2070 in a post-Black Ops 3 world, career modes a story would detail a year of chaos following a global pandemic and climate disaster. Oh, boy. Where do they get their ideas from? Um <laughs> uh, Two factions would emerge, the two sides uh, you could pick from the, uh, to play from as stroked out two sides you can pick from uh to play as in the mode name the world's united nations a central governing body and the free people's army supported by many of the world's impoverished nations uh your path through the mode would be affected by your choices of side as well as who won or lost each 15 to 20 minute mission uh with several missions set across six larger story locations Missions would feature both PvP and PvE sections, vehicles, Black Ops 3 style abilities, side objectives, and companion assist characters based on the game's multiplayer specialists. Four early missions are detailed along 
alongside information on major characters, such as a handler for each faction, a journalist character you need to extract from behind enemy lines. Uh, there's also details on plans for custom game modes, a skirmish offering, and DLC seasons offering new story content. Um, the post concludes that, uh, with a reminder of the user's upcoming video, which will go into further detail as well as a call for more information. Before being scrapped in early 2018, a work-in-progress version of Career Mode was given to Activision employees to play over the 2017 holiday break. This build may hold even more detail. Uh, the poster suggests calling for footage of it to now be made public. So I think most interesting is missions would feature both PvP and PvE sections. Yes. In a single player, well, that's why it's not called single player. They're calling it a campaign. Yes, it's called mode. career. Yeah, it's called career. career. So this is not. This wouldn't have been a typical Call of Duty single player campaign. It would have been designed more like a multiplayer mission. Uh, so in a way, this never had a single. This game never had a single player to begin with. It was always going to basically be a multiplayer only game. But one of the modes was going to be like a uh, sort of like a hybrid of a traditional story campaign and a multiplayer campaign. That sounds pretty sick. I would have played that. That yeah, sounds like a, a destiny type that. of situation. Like, yeah. like you're, you're, you're advancing the story, but other people are like there around you. That sounds fucking awesome. Yeah. Uh, Black Ops 3 uh, is the reason I stopped playing Call of Duty uh, single player campaigns because that single player campaign was trash. Yeah. So I don't blame them for scrapping one on Black Ops 4, but uh, this one sounds pretty freaking awesome. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't have been a traditional single-player campaign. It still would have been some sort of multiplayer campaign. And it's very hard to do story-based content in a multiplayer setting because you have to, you know, relying on other people to progress the story kind of grinds everything to a halt. Because if... You're not as good as everyone else in the campaign. You're not going to see the end of that story. Well, Destiny did a good job, but what's interesting here is that it says player versus player. So in order yeah. to advance the story, you need to fight other real people. Like that that yeah. kind of that could go wrong, but I'm interested, you know. I, I that sounds yeah. like a like a like a good way to shake things up a little bit. Cuz mm -hmm. again, like I'm playing Call of Duty mostly for the multiplayer. But uh, uh, I would be interested in the single player if it if if they changed things up like this because up until this point, the single player in Call of Duty was just getting stale. It was just the same shit over and over. Yeah. Again, the same sort of bad mm -hmm. AI, just 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 bullet sponges and, and shit. Yeah. So I if this is uh I don't know if it's unfortunate. I would have liked to have seen this, but I mean. Black Ops Four was okay. We we got a battle royale in it. It was yeah. the it was the I bones you really of Warzone. That. Yeah, yeah, I liked it a lot. So uh, I'm happy with what we ended up with. I mm -hmm. watched somebody play that. Uh, I think it was called Blackout Mode. I watched somebody play that recently. It looked like shit. But back in the day, <laughs> it was fun. yeah. Uh, anyway. What else do we got going on here? Oh, Spider-Man uh, too? Yep, yeah, Spider-Man again and more secret file findings. Uh Insomniac Games was developing a multiplayer mode for Spider-Man which would have included Miles Morales and various game modes according to PC Game Files. Uh with the release of the PC version of Spider-Man Remastered, Twitter user Dwine Tamp has discovered inside the game's executable references to a multiplayer game mode not uh, that is not currently accessible. BGC has verified the contents of the file, confirming these elements. Going by limited information that is accessible, the multiplayer mode would have allowed a second player to take control of Miles Morales along with his unique loadout abilities uh, in various activities. Uh, it would also include PvP mode and a game type referred to as free-for-all, uh, which would have been uh, PvE mode. The files include callouts to uh, callouts to which player uh, has become the superior Spider-Man, as well as player one, player two, and red and blue teams. The multiplayer mode would seemingly have been separate from the single-player campaign, according to the game files. It uh, it would not be available from the 
beginning of the game, meaning players would have to unlock this mode or possibly download it as additional content. The files could suggest that a multiplayer mode is being developed for Spider-Man 2, uh, the sequel that is seemingly set to include both Peter and Miles. However, uh, after announcing the sequel, Ryan Schneider from Insomniac Games referred to the game as the most epic single-player adventure yet. Uh, Marvel Spider-Man released on PC last week, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, there is code in the game for a multiplayer mode of some kind. Um... Debug only. Oh, no. No, it says debug only, and then it says a normal one. Um, this article suggests it could be for the next game? Uh, yeah. I mean, assuming because it's going to be built on the same engine as this. Mm -hmm. So it would make sense if like they started working on it. They might have been testing multiplayer in Spider-Man 1 to begin with. Uh, with the intent on putting it into Spider-Man 2, because that'll have two Spider-Men. How much diff... I mean, Miles Morales has different abilities. Is he yes. a lot more powerful than regular Spider-Man? Because he's... he's... Not, I mean, the Venom Blast would probably be a big deal, mm -hmm. but I feel like Peter Parker could have like gadgets that could you know, negate that to an effect. I think the bigger thing, though, is Miles can turn invisible. Oh. <laughs> and, like, that does kind of, like, break the stealth sections in the game. Because you can right. just turn invisible and walk up to people. Yeah. that's that's That kind of breaks it a little bit. Everybody's going to want to be yeah. Miles Morales instead. Um, yeah. This would be awesome. I would love to play this. Um, yeah. I I do hope it comes out in, in the next one. They got to do something to make the next one a little different. Because we already had Spider-Man. Next one was Miles Morales. That made it different enough. Now we need something else to shake it up. Having co-op would be fucking awesome. I, I would uh, yeah. maybe play through the game that way. <laughs> I haven't beaten either of those games. I played uh, the first game for like, what, like six hours maybe. And then the, the Miles Morales I played for like 20 minutes. <laughs> I story completed both those games. They are very good. I really like them. Um, one thing they could do, I mean... They could give us the entire map of New York City because we didn't get that in this game. They cut out a whole section of, you know, North Manhattan, uh, Upper Manhattan, as it were. Um, Yeah, maybe like a GTA 5 style ping ponging between the, the different Spider-Men. Maybe like what Arkham did, where you can tag team between characters if you're fighting in the same arena. I wouldn't mind just straight up, like, let me just have somebody join my game and it's miles morales you know yeah or the other way around i could play miles mm -hmm. morales in somebody else's game like that'd be awesome yeah uh more ways to play with my friends that's what i want yes with these games uh it's funny because i don't want that at all i want to be left <laughs> alone nobody talk to me while i play uh ea says fifa players actually love the game and their controversial <laughs> loot boxes. Actually, for you, actually, actually, will our fans? Yes, they <laughs> actually love giving us money for these dumb. They things. do. Yes. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry to take that from you. Four, four years after Star Wars Battlefront 2's disastrous launch galvanized the world against loot boxes, EA is still defending the exploitative microtransactions in its crown jewel, FIFA. Uh, in-game card packs don't just make the publisher billions. EA swears that players love them too. We wholeheartedly believe the Ultimate Team and the Foot Packs, F-U-T Packs, uh, which have been part of the game for more than a decade, are part of are a part of FIFA that players love. EA told Eurogamer in a statement yesterday. Uh, fans love the game. Fans love that the game reflects the real-world excitement and strategy of building and managing a squad, uh, giving players the choice to spend it to spend if they want to giving players the choice to spend if they want to is fair that's what they're trying to say okay i have a i have a fourth grade reading comprehension the publisher's latest endorsement of loot boxes comes as it prepares to launch fifa 23 the last game in the series with the fifa license before it's rebranded to ea sports fc ea confirmed to eurogamer that the foot packs 
will return in the new game this fall, uh, an announcement that comes a month after the UK government revealed it would not regulate loot boxes as gambling, despite people uh, who use them being more than likely to experience gambling, mental health, and financial problems uh, gaming-related. Uh, this is a really weirdly worded sentence. Uh, despite people who use them being more than likely to experience gambling, mental health, financial, and problems gaming-related harms. It was, this oh, article was written it. by by Ethan Gack. <laughs> uh, for those who aren't aware, Ultimate Team is FIFA's most popular online mode. It revolves around creating a dream team consisting of players acquired from opening card packs. Higher-rated stars like Cristiano Ronaldo... Uh, Lionel Messi and past icon Pele perform better in matches and are also extremely hard to get. The company calls it an innocent, fun, surprise mechanic and has maintained in the past that it's definitely not gambling. <laughs> EA says it encourages players to earn packs by playing the game, but it still gives them the option to buy them outright for real money. Given the competitive nature of the mode and the fact that there is an entire market around YouTubers and influencers glorifying pack opening, um, in search for the rare soccer stars, it's not hard to see why this might be a bad idea. While some big game companies have seen dips in their business this year, EA has continued flying high in large part because of the ongoing success of its loot box based Ultimate Teams mode. EA told Eurogamer that only one in 10 players buy foot packs in re with real money, but the revenue speaks for itself. In 2020, the mode featured in Madden and NHL as well earned the company 1.62 billion dollars holy we don't know fuck we don't know how much it earned last year however because ea declined to, uh decided to omit the figure from its reporting in 2021 uh it's no wonder then that ea continues to run interference for, uh interference for the controversial mechanic years after many other major games have dropped it as Eurogamer points out, there remains regulatory pressure in Norway, Belgium, the Netherlands, and other European countries where FIFA is most popular to crack down on gambling mechanics in the game. Uh, in Belgium, where loot boxes have been outright banned, EA removed them from the game. Wow. So you can see why loot boxes are a thing. They make a company $1.6 billion a year. I don't think there's anything wrong with microtransactions in a game if they are purely cosmetic, unobtrusive, and don't uh like like don't have an advantage in gameplay like at all. Uh especially on a multiplayer game. Uh right. I'm not sure that that's the way it works in FIFA though. Well no, because if you're buying a loot box, a loot pack, you're getting first off, you're getting a random character. You're getting a random player. Mm -hmm. So you don't know who you're getting. It's okay. very possible that, that you're getting a high tier soccer player like Christian uh Christian Ronaldo or a Pele. And I know those are high tier players because I actually know who they are. I've heard <laughs> of them before. So it's chance the reason that if you have them on your team, you're gonna have a better team. If I buy a loot box and I don't get them, but you do. Yeah. You have the advantage over me, but it's an unfair advantage because it was random. And because I purchased the box. Yeah. It's, it's another thing. Like it's, it's another ethical concern because like, uh, let's say loot boxes or, 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 or in-game paid content. Let's say you can buy something that you can unlock in the game later on. That's mm -hmm. also an unfair advantage because right off the bat, I can unlock the cool, powerful shit where you have to grind the game for hundreds of hours and you're going to lose. You're going to be at a disadvantage because other yeah. people are going to spend the money on the on the, the the powerful character or whatever it is. I think yeah. Pokemon Unite had that problem. Uh, and people I were just buying all of the items and shit right off the bat that made you good. And other people had to grind for them. And and I think it's important to point out that the that uh, the loot boxes that FIFA are offering are random. So you can be putting in hundreds, possibly thousands of dollars into the game <laughs> and never get the player that you want because that's just the way it works. Yeah. So it's it's legit gambling. 
that yeah that that's the bigger concern more so than uh you know people buying things rather than unlocking yeah it's it, it's bigger than just uh having an unfair advantage uh, you're yeah. literally gambling with your, with your money. Yeah. And this is a game that's rated E, you know, for everybody. Yeah. A lot of my coworkers uh, play Diablo Immortal, and they are flabbergasted by the amount of people who spend, like, thousands of dollars in that yeah. game for random cosmetics and, like, buffs and stuff. Yeah. Uh, do they watch YouTube videos of people spending tens of thousands of dollars on yeah. freaking stuff yeah. in Diablo Immortal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're like horrified that this exists. Yeah, that's a, it's it's because of people like that. But like, I don't mind yeah. a game being cheap. Like, for example, Diablo Immortal. I don't mind a game because that's a free to play game, is it? Isn't it? I'm like, I'm assuming it's yeah, free to play. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's free to play, and it's free to play because you have those whales who are dropping thousands of dollars. You know. Mm -hmm. let them drop the thousand dollars they probably got it right i'll just coast off yeah. them and i'll play it for free <laughs> thank you very much have a great time by myself i don't mind that unless those uh in-game items give you some sort of advantage in in gameplay yeah i don't mind loot box gambling unless the game is like you know the fact that this is like a like a sports game and like kids are gonna play it, that's a little weird. Yeah. And the fact that you unlock uh players is a little weird. Yeah. It's a little bit of a concern to me. Yeah. It was the same problem with uh Battlefront 2. You know, you could randomly get Darth Vader or you can randomly get nothing. And yeah. if you wanted to unlock Darth Vader in the game, you could have, but it would have taken you like ten thousand hours to do so. Could you have just bought him outright, or would you have no. to? Uh, you had to gamble for him. That's fucked. Yeah, up. <laughs> I, I, they've say, they've changed it since then. Now I think you need to like spend a ridiculous amount of time in the game. Yeah, Battlefront went back on the loot box idea, and then they went back on it again. They did they redid yeah. the loot boxes, and then I don't know if they I don't know what the fate ended up being. But EA went yeah. back and they flip flopped a lot on loot boxes in Battlefront. Mm -hmm. Um. Player Walt, thank you for the 15 months. I appreciate it. Uh, Forspoken trailer, getting rough spots online. Is there a new trailer? Because the last couple of trailers have all been rough. I'm actually surprised. Well, I've seen some of this discourse online. I'm actually surprised that uh, now people are like, oh, this game doesn't sound good. <laughs> well, this one was particularly uh, memeable. Okay. Uh, for Spoken's last last made headlines when it was rele released, it was pushed back from October 11th of this year to January 24th of next year. It's mm. back again, though this time for a more lighthearted reason. I don't know if it's lighthearted. Uh, a trailer posted on Forspoken's Twitter account this week has been raising eyebrows. It's meant to tell us more about the setting of the game and its lead character, Frey Holland. Instead, what it manages to do is fill you with cringe Thanks mm -hmm. to the dialogue spoken over some game bits of gameplay, some bits of gameplay cut together, it's been dunked on far and wide. And uh, and if you don't understand why yet, just watch for yourself. Should I play uh, it? And yeah, why not? It's on their Twitter. I mean, we'll probably get demonetized for it, but I'm, I'm that's gonna... why we got the Manscaped sponsorship. Yeah, play it. So let me get this straight. I'm somewhere that's not what I would call Earth. I'm seeing freaking dragons, and oh yeah, I'm talking to a cop. Yeah, okay, that is something I do now. I do magic, kill jacked up beasts. I'll probably fly next. Yeah, I, I see like, I remember it always being that cringy. I remember the dialogue from the very yeah. first trailer being that cringy. And I was like, why yeah. do people think this looks good? <laughs> We've talked about it on the show. I know I brought up that like this looks like one of those games that thinks it's going to be funny by just talking too much. Um, and I think people are now just starting to realize uh, that this is that's what the game is. I don't know why is so, this trailer... Uh, was the one to break everyone's mind, but not what I would call Ingle. Yeah, it's, it's, people are memeing it. Somebody, uh, somebody did Bloodborne. 
Yeah. I'm seeing freaking werewolves. <laughs> I've seen I've seen some really good ones. I uh, the, the the first one was uh went to report your account but there's no option for cringe so I picked terrorism. <laughs> there's one down further where he does uh somebody does Tony Hawk to it. <laughs> That oh, was really oh, funny. So, okay. yeah. I'm, play I'm playing Here it right now. I am yeah. doing everything that <laughs> I can. Holding on to what I freaking am. Pretending I'm like some jacked up Superman. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's something I do now. Yeah. Okay, that was pretty, that was pretty good. Uh... This trailer made me cry like an anime fan on prom night. What is that reference? I remember that. <laughs> uh, line, Mighty number no. nine. Mighty, Mighty number no. nine. nine. Yeah. Right. So let me get this straight. I'm somewhere that isn't Australia with the biggest scary natives. And oh, yeah, I'm talking to a magic mask. Yeah. <laughs> whoa. That's something I do now. <laughs> I jump and spin. I fight big mutants. I'll probably get a bazooka next. There's one uh, with a screenshot from Silent Hill 2 that goes, so let me get this straight. I just received a letter from my freaking dead wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, there's a Metal Gear one. Oh, so I'm let me get it. this straight. Oh. I'm somewhere after the end of the Cold War. I'm fighting freaking mobile bipedal nuclear launch systems. And I'm talking to an anime fan. I don't think I saw this one. <laughs> I didn't like that one. I didn't like that one as much. Could have been a little better. <laughs> Yeah. Uh yeah, I'm I'm shocked that it took this long for people to to like see the cringe in, in Forspoken. I yeah. always thought the dialogue was like a little weird. And the I mean, it got delayed recently. Um Yeah. And the recent I mean, the recent trailers, it was like there's like nothing in the world. Just yeah. the whole game just seems like particle effects and that's what's so cool about the game you know that's the whole big selling point i were it was interesting like when all this discourse happened because a lot of people were comparing it to uh the dialogue stylings of joss whedon and people just you know trashing on that style of dialogue writing i can remember a time not very long ago where people were desperately trying to emulate that style for good and bad you know that that very fast-paced you know jokey type of dialogue to it that was made popular in buffy and firefly and it, the it, avengers it's forcefully like, relatable <laughs> yeah and like there are ways to do it well mm -hmm. but when you do it wrong it shows it, it is like the most obvious thing when it is done poorly and for spoken looks to be like it's doing it poorly <laughs> i saw people comparing this sort of dialogue to like the avengers and and yeah you see a lot of you would have seen a lot of dialogue like this in like 80s movies and stuff but like uh it, it this feels diff this feels uh, again like forceful relatability yeah. it feels it like definitely it's definitely trying to be like hip and trendy when i think that ship has long sailed <laughs> yeah it, it this wasn't the way to go about being like fun and quirky they could have yeah they they missed the mark a little bit they could have done this but a better job of it mm -hmm. um but again i think that this force spoken has always sounded like this there's always been a weird yeah. little problem with it so get ready for the cringe game coming out uh i think yeah. uh <laughs> next year or something yeah january uh, next year jay cannon thank you for the thousand bits too many is a kais yeah what is that uh, it's an anime thing, isn't you it? Know? Yeah. Isn't that a bar? Isn't that a... Oh, it's uh, an anime. Isekai is a Japanese genre of, of portal fantasy and science fiction. It includes novels, light novels, films, manga, anime, and video games that revolve around a person or people who are transported to and have survived in another world, such uh... as a fantasy world, virtual world, another planet, or a parallel universe. Izakaya is a bar. <laughs> ah. Put an A at the end. And, and it's a Z instead of an S. And then it's a fucking whole other thing. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, that's what that's. A, I'm sick of that. Also, like you take a you take a person from our world, the real world, mm-hmm. and you transfer them to a, like like a mysterious world, yeah. so that you can see this mysterious world through a relatable character. Yeah, I, I hate that because uh, <laughs> like they did that with Monster Hunter. Yeah, and, and like, it was that necessary? No, like we can un- we will understand a fantasy world if you give us relatable characters who live in that fantasy world. You don't have to get you know some guy from New York <laughs> and put him in a weird setting. I like to think about Star Wars when they do yes. that because Star Wars, you're just you're just thrown in there. You're just thrown in, and it's fine. We can figure it out. Yeah. Anyway, I just like to think about Star Wars. Period. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much lately. Uh, uh, no, even lately. Then I remember the fans, and then I get sad. But speaking <laughs> of Star Wars, uh, Disney's D twenty three event will include Disney and Marvel games. This is the first time that they will oh. be showcasing video games at D twenty three. Uh, This year, the D23 Expo will have something substantial for video game fans with Disney and Marvel Games Showcase uh, coming on September 9th. Uh, You will be able to watch it online if you cannot go to the sold-out event in person. The uh, Disney and Marvel Games Showcase promises new looks and new content reveals for Disney's Dream Valley, Marvel's Midnight Suns, which recently got delayed as well, and Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. Disney is also promising a sneak peek at an upcoming Marvel ensemble game from Skydance New Media, uh, former Uncharted creative director Amy Hedding's new studio. Skydance and Marvel announced their new project last October and have revealed little uh, in the way of concrete details. The studio also has a Star Wars game in the works, but it seems unlikely we'll see anything uh, anytime soon. Beyond those announced projects, there's a long list of games based on Disney-owned properties, including Bethesda's Indiana Jones game, Insomniac Spider-Man 2 and Wolverine, a new Star Wars game from Ubisoft's Massive Entertainment, Respawn Entertainment, Aspire, and Quantic Dream. Uh, While none of those titles are confirmed to appear at Disney and Marvel Showcase, it's possible fans could get updates on projects closer to completion, like next year's Jedi Survivor. So yeah. I I think Jedi Survivor Survivor has a, a good chance of showing up. Um... I think that uh oh we we had um Midnight Suns was delayed. Yes. There's a possibility the weird... we can learn a little more about that. Yeah. Uh Jedi Survivor uh probably won't be out for a really long time though, so I doubt we'll see anything substantial. Probably mm-hmm. just like a more in-depth trailer or um, or like a title. Did yeah. we get a title? I don't think we got a title trailer. We did. Oh, we did. Yeah. Maybe we'll get a look at what the freaking character looks like. There, they had the action figure reveal. That's what he's gonna look. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll look like an action figure. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we also have Wolverine. I, we haven't heard anything about that besides a title. Um. Yeah. I'm interested. I'm interested in yeah. what's. Uh, also, yeah, I don't think we're gonna see anything about that Indiana Jones game. No, which stinks because I was. I'm really looking forward to. It. I am fearful for that game. I mean, it's Bethesda, it's Machine Games who did the Wolfenstein game, so that gives me hope. Mm -hmm. And I'd rather an Indiana Jones game than a new Indiana Jones movie. He's going to be like 80-something when that movie comes out, man. (laughs) Anyway, uh, that's all the news we have. Yes. It's an early night, Will. Yeah. Oh, good. Maybe I'll go to bed. But first. No, you can't go to bed. Because we got to do this. Quit of the week! Quit of the yeah. week! Quit of the week! This is by Born Posting. And it says, if the Predator landed in Boston, it wouldn't have gone down like that. And it's a picture <laughs> of uh, Mark Wahlberg from, uh, what's his movie? The Departed. The Departed. The Departed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a reference to um, him talking about 9-11. Yes. <laughs> if he was on the plane, it wouldn't have gone down like that. Nope. Which is also a uh, pun if you think about it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, I will talk to you guys real quick. <laughs> yeah.
Now we have time to talk to people who left comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. Uh, where am I at here? Um, beep, boop. We got Irv, who's in the chat, who we met. Yes. And also left a comment last week. He said, can't wait to see you guys at LI Retro and gift Bob an air fryer. You didn't. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> uh, and will some more Dunkin' Donuts coffee. You di also I'm didn't do that. Yeah, did not do that. So thanks, bro. <laughs> uh, Chubbs the Owl says, I just saw Prey last night, and I got to say, those haters don't know what they're talking about. It's a fantastic movie. Kind of bummed it didn't get a theatrical release. It totally deserves it. I didn't know it didn't get a theatrical release. Yeah, it went straight to... Went straight to Hulu. I think it was some weird political thing between uh, Disney because now they own Fox, so they didn't want it. They didn't think it was good enough to go to theaters, and they didn't want to put it in a the theater. Otherwise, we go on another streaming service, so they just dumped it on Hulu. But I will say it is well worth watching, regardless of where you see it. It's a, it's a good ass time. I've heard very good things about it, and I see yeah. I see billboards for it all over the place. Do you want my Hulu login so you can watch it? <laughs> No. Uh, okay. Bavish Kabani uh, says, you introduced me to Metroid with Metroid Dread. I think it's the best game that has come out recently anywhere, and I am a PC gamer. Can you do Metroid tier list as well? <laughs> uh, uh, that would be a short tier list because there aren't as many Metroid. I know, and we talked about this on the Nintendo podcast, and Jackson tried to make it sound like there's a billion 2D Metroid games, and there are five. <laughs> I want to make that very clear. Uh, the original Samus Returns, Super Metroid, Fusion, Dread, and then there's two remakes. Exactly. So. And I'm not fucking counting the remakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait. What is what is uh, Other M count? That's like a 2D, 3D hybrid game. Metroid sometimes sometimes Other M, sometimes. we don't talk about it. True. Is the thing, is what yeah. we're talking about. All right, 2D Metroid Dread tier list, Will. Uh, Met <laughs> uh, or, or 2D Metroid tier list. Metroid Dread, S tier, very good game. Mm -hmm. uh, we like Fusion. I'm also going to put that in S tier. Uh, uh, you like Super Metroid a lot. Super Metroid is 100% S tier. Okay. Uh, uh, regular Metroid, I'm going to put it in B. Yeah, regular Metroid is not that great. Metroid uh, 2? Now, I only ever played... So I played a little bit of Metroid 2 as a Game Boy game. I played yeah. it as Samus Returns, and it's really not that good. I'm going to put it in B just above the original game. Right. Um, uh, Metroid... F uh, what the hell is this one called? Zero, Zero Mission? Mission? That's the remake of one. I'm not... I would... Count. Okay. Uh, well, that's it. <laughs> that's it. It's five games. I mean, yeah. I'll put the remakes in here. Uh... uh Maybe Samus Returns is a B tier, but uh, Zero Mission is A tier. Sure, there you go. Yeah. Done. What's what are what's this one? I don't know. Oh, is that another Metroid Two remake? Wow, look at that! Wow. Why are there two dreads? I have no idea. <laughs> uh, physical and digital. <laughs> okay. There's your Metroid tier list. Uh, yeah. They're all phenomenal games. Uh, yes. But some are better than others. Uh, what else? Uh, Riccoli says, do a Sonic tier list. It will be so funny. All right, here we go, baby. Sonic tier. <laughs> no. I, so I, last night, actually, I almost started some beef, uh, because IGN released an article that was there. So IGN, notoriously Sonic haters, released, yes. released, uh, the top 10 Sonic games. Oh, I saw this. No, this this was a bullshit list. I wonder if I can find it now. Oh, here it is. This is a really bullshit list. Uh, f yeah. f first number ten, Sonic Unleashed. Get this no. off the list. Uh, number nine, Sonic Rush. This is a better game than nine. Um, I I personally love this game. So I love Sonic Rush. I'll Sonic, allow it. Sonic the Hedgehog Two is number eight. Sonic CD no. is number seven. Sonic 3 and Knuckles is six, and that is egregious. Uh, that Sonic is Colors egregious. is five. 
Sonic Advance is four, which is okay, fine. Sonic Advance. Sonic it's a Advent- good game, but it's not a top five game. Sonic Adventure 2 Battle is number three. Now, this is a good game, no. but it's not better than a lot of the things you've already said. Uh, Sonic yeah. Mania is number two, and number one is Sonic Generations. Now, I love Sonic Generations. I think it is a fantastic game. It might be a top five Sonic game, but no one in their right mind thinks that is the best Sonic game of all time. After I read this, I wrote out my top 10, and then I deleted it. (laughs) I was like, I'm not posting this. I don't need to start this shit right now. Yeah. Yeah. But I I I put uh, I think I put Sonic Mania as number one, or it might have been yeah, Sonic. Yeah, I would. I think I put Sonic Mania number one, and I put Sonic Three and Knuckles right behind it. Yeah, I mean Sonic Mania is good enough so that you know if you you know if you don't want to recommend if you just want to play one Sonic game like to get the complete Sonic experience, Sonic Mania is the game to get. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so monthly gamer says Yoshi's Island is S tier. Also, I highly disagree. The original Super Mario Maker is better than two. You're wrong. You're just wrong. Uh, (laughs) I think the initial wave was more hype, but as a game itself, Mario Maker 2 has way more assets for you to work with than I think Bob is heavily taking for granted. So it would have more assets if you ignore all of the mystery mushrooms. Mm, yeah i mean well i mean the mystery mushrooms like what did they do nothing they just but they they helped you make a level that was stylized after a character which was a huge deal yeah like make a mega man level you could play it as mega man make a sonic level you could play a Sonic. that was a huge deal but otherwise yeah you got slopes in mario maker 2 big whoop uh i think i were on off switches in the first Mario Maker? No. You had P blocks. So that was kind of like the yeah. same thing. Checking in to say happy Tuesday. Couldn't catch you live at eight tonight, and I can't pick you up in the middle. I can't pick you up in the middle. What? I'll I'll watch you on the YouTube replay tomorrow night. Have fun. Thank you, Jeffrey Sorensen. Thank you. We're in the Twitch chat right now. Yes. Uh we got a hundred bits from sixteen bit oh, yeah. uh gambit. Uh, well, I've been wanting to get into, wanted to get something from my comic book itch. I used to have Marvel Unlimited and it sucked. Would you recommend Comixology? Sadly, yes, <laughs> because <laughs> as much as the storefront sucks now, um, they are still the best place to go for digital comics. They're like really the only place to go for digital comics because they have just about everything and Comixology Unlimited Although they completely like fucked it by integrating it into Amazon, still like has a one of the best libraries of comics for a monthly fee. So uh, there, there was recently an article from some major publication that said uh, that was about the new uh, uh, comicsology. That was, yeah. like, is it worth it to use it? Um, Metascension no, but- says. I'm trying to convince myself to spend a lot of money on a top-end virtual pinball machine. <laughs> How do you talk yourself into or out of large purchases? Um, uh, it, it's simple. I use a I use a financing software called uh, You Need a Budget. You probably You Need a Budget dot com, and I look at that and I go, Nope. <laughs> Is that a thing? That's not a thing. Yeah, yeah. You Need a Budget dot com. It helps you keep track of your uh, your personal finances. It works really well. Like I, I use it every day. I'm half expecting your- it to just be a website that says, "Don't buy that." <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a real website. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I use it. My wife uses it. Put in all your purchases. Put in your bank account. And it's like, hey, don't buy that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've never heard of a virtual pinball machine. Yeah, isn't that just a computer game? It looks like it's like a big TV that's like vertical. Oh, oh, I've seen that like in arcades and stuff. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. You should buy that. (laughs) (laughs) 
No, I don't know, man. Like, you know, look at your fucking money and see if you if you buy this, can you eat for the next couple of days? You know? Yeah. And how much yeah. how much happiness will this bring you versus how much despair will you have losing the that money? Yeah. Uh the problem is I can afford it, but I can't convince myself to spend it. Then don't buy it. You don't need yeah. to buy it. You don't need it. <laughs> That's for damn sure. You don't need yeah. it. Yeah. Uh I had fun in the Simpsons pinball at LI Retro. A little too much fun. Oh, God. A friend of mine was trying to convince me to buy it because they were selling it. <laughs> I it think was we, I think a lot of money. wanted to try to pool all our friends together to get some money for it. Like, if, that, if we each put in a thousand each, we could afford it. Uh, they were selling uh, the Indiana Jones arcade, uh, the uh, pinball like, machine, for $10,000. No, thank you, sir. Don't forget, we have the Marvel vs. Capcom 2 arcade one-up cabinet machine. Yes, uh, I would yes. like that. Yeah. I will not buy it, though. <laughs> <laughs> I am... Uh, Thrill House is working on an arcade cabinet for me that I'm excited about. Oh, nice. About. That will just have nice. everything in it, so... Yeah. But I will. I would still purchase an original Super Mario Bros. vs. arcade cabinet. I would purchase that. Mm. Yeah. I worked at an arcade before COVID shut down. Pixel Blast. Oh, Where's nice. that? Uh, I don't know. I'm reading the chat now. Manscaped okay. really works. I'm never going back to waxing. Yeah, especially down there. That that hurts. Waxing <laughs> sounds like it sucks. Yeah, that is that is not fun. <clears throat> Imagine waxing a ball. You're gonna pull it with no. it. That sounds bad. Friends of Galloping Ghost outside Chicago. Isn't is Galloping Ghost the one that's like uh the biggest arcade? I think so. One of the biggest arcades in the USA. Yeah. Either. Um All right, what else do you people got for us? Yeah. What do you, what do you want to say, or what do you want to ask us? If ever in Brookfield, Illinois, near Chicago, definitely make a trip to Galloping Ghost Arcade. I think E went there and filmed a whole video about it. Will you have any interest in Cult of the Lamb? Um, you were telling me about that. What's that game again? It's very, it's very good. It's uh, a. Yeah. Uh, it's a it's a rogue light, but not really. Okay. So like uh you have a, a village where mm-hmm. you where you build your cult and you have to, and it's it's a little bit like Animal Crossing. You have villagers, but they're all like kinda like like mining stuff and, and helping you get resources and stuff. And okay. in the meantime, you're going off on adventures kind of like uh enter the gungeon binding of isaac style you're going through dungeons to get to okay. level up and get more materials and stuff and then if you die or beat the level you go back to the village and, and do more mm-hmm. like world building stuff um it's very good it's a very good game cool i and did it, uh I did download roller drone today oh. that's finally on sale i didn't get a chance to play it yet but i have it and it's ready to go i might try to I try to sneak that in uh, this weekend. Like, take a break from Guardians of the Galaxy and play a little bit of that because I that really want to play that game. Yeah. That looks very good. That's the uh, yeah. roller skating uh, Tony Hawk, but with a gun. Arena, arena shooter. <laughs> arena shooter. Yeah. Is Splatoon 2's matchmaking that awful? It's pretty bad. I mean, a lot of Nintendo's matchmaking is pretty bad. Yeah. Are there any games coming out this holiday you are excited for? No. No, <laughs> there's really nothing. I'm really even kidding. even games like I would like to play like off nights. I'm like, I can wait. <laughs> I'm really not even yeah. I'm not excited for anything. Uh, there's always one that I'll see and I'm like, oh, yeah, that one. I want to try that one. Yeah. But uh, nothing's coming to mind right now. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I didn't bring the air fryer because let's just say security confiscated it. OK, that's a good <laughs> excuse. That's a very good excuse. 
y'all ever feel stuck in life career-wise? Bob, I know you worked at EB Games before content creating. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then I just wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so it's... you can get, you will just be unstuck. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that doesn't happen, you know, just by sitting there though. Like mm -hmm. you do have to like set aside time to like get yourself out of that situation. You need, it, you, need it to, may... you need to create your own opportunities. Yeah. It, it may take a very long time. Cause I remember like my first job out of college, I was there for much longer than I wanted to be. And it took forever to get out, but eventually I did. Um, you just gotta, you know, just gotta keep your head up and know that it's, you know, not the end of the world. Just look for look for light at the end of the tunnel and take it. it. You have to be really lucky to get like, you know, on a career path that works. But uh, yeah, you can create your own luck by trying things all different ways and trying it over and over again by by mm -hmm. making your own opportunities. Anyway, um, I'm looking forward to the Last of Us remake. That is the first time I've ever heard anybody say that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm glad. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are going to enjoy that. Yeah. Uh, life is a process of being stuck. Just keep swimming. Uh, are you going to try the Splatoon test fire? When is that? I, th I thought that happened already. Or did I make that up? You better have made it up. I always miss all like the the beta testing that Nintendo does. I don't think it's announced yet. End of the month for Splatoon three. Okay, do we have a? Oh, Splatoon three global test fire. Later this month. That's all they said. Yeah. When could the open beta start with the release of the game already 30 days away? There's not much time left. Oh my God, it's 30 days away? I didn't even realize Jesus. that. Uh, it could probably be as early as this or next weekend. Oh no. Uh, Nintendo pulled back the curtain on its latest Splatoon 3. Uh, it's debuting, oh wait. Sp uh, oh yeah, special Splatfest before the game's launch, debuting later this month, August twenty seventh. The Splatfest uh, public beta for anyone with a Switch can take will take place between nine a.m. and nine p.m. on August twenty seventh, Eastern time. Yes, Pacific time. Pacific time. Nine a.m. So, to nine p.m. Pacific time. Yeah. So that's a that's a wide window to, to midnight okay. on the East Coast. I might give that a try. I got shit to do next weekend, though. So I don't know. Splatoon it's, it's 3 launches on September 9th. Ugh. Splatoon 3 will launch on September 9th. Thoughts on YouTubers that think Splatoon 3 should have been DLC? Uh, they're stupid and haven't looked into this game at all. <laughs> yeah. Is there any hope for DC movies to be like the MCU? I really want to like DC, but the movies are really bad. What's the problem? The problem is you're watching uh, the movies. Yeah. Uh the problem is uh idiots run run the run the asylum right now. I mean they there were do there was a clear direction finally. We're just l let the movies be movies, don't connect them to anything, just just let people make the movies that they want to make. Uh and we got good movies out of it. We got Aquaman, we got Birds of Prey, we got the Batman. Um and now it's like no Let's do what Marvel does. I like them. They're Marvel movies. Do that. So, yeah. The, the someone Batman's earlier, very good. Yes. I saw someone earlier ask, like, what I think of the state of the DC movies. And it's like, I don't care anymore. I really don't. <laughs> just give me. Just put them out. I'll watch them, obviously. But, like, I, I don't I don't have the energy to become invested in, like, you know, the movies that they want to put out or what movies they should put out or what plan they should have. I don't give a shit. Just, just <laughs> put the movies out, stop overthinking them and just, just let me enjoy them. Just don't, you know, it's not that hard to make a comic book movie. Yeah. The MCU only worked out because they made good movies first. <laughs> yes. You got to start with the good movies and then you yeah, can start, start with building good movies. Off don't, of 
don't worry about con- connecting them until you have the movies are good, you know, and right. then eventually you can do whatever. Also, put Batgirl on HBO Max. <laughs> Arlo said that or something like it before the direct, but I think people just lacked info before the direct because Xenoblade 3 was rolling out. I, I think it was obvious that Splatoon 3 had a lot. I mean, it's a multiplayer game. Yeah. So, like, the, little changes to, to, like, weapons and shit is kind of going to change a lot in the game. So... I think we knew it was going to be a whole... The first trailer we saw Splatoon 3 looked like a completely different game. Yeah. So I don't know. Anyway, that's it for us. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, though, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolfden Podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. I'll stream on Thursday. It'll probably be Cult of the Lamb again because I enjoyed that and it has good Twitch integration. I make it so that uh, viewers can be the villagers in the in the game, and you like create your own character if you if you get picked as one of the villagers. It's pretty cool. Um. Anyway, in the meantime, who should we raid? Ah, Jackson's still streaming. Whatever. Whatever, he can have it. Homophobic kids will stop watching it after we come out. What the fuck? (laughs) You didn't hear that, did you? Uh, No, all I heard you say is what the fuck. I clicked on his stream and somebody in the Discord was talking about homophobic kids. I don't know. Go watch Jackson. He's not even there. It's just his chair. Uh, I'll see you guys uh, next time on Thursday. Uh, I also have a video that people are going to be mad at me about because I did a mod on the PlayStation Vita and it was, uh, I had nothing but problems and I have nothing but bad things to say about the PlayStation Vita mod. (laughs) Uh, Oh boy. Thank you for being here. Goodbye. Goodbye.